Over the last several months, we've been going through a series asking the question, who are the Puritans? And today, we've, as we've finished going through what they believed, who they were, you know, history and that kind of thing, now I wanted to look at some specific works of the Puritans. And I could go to many different well-known Puritans, uh, but today I have a Puritan who is not quite as well known, and that is Robert Trail. And Robert Trail comes in two volumes published by the Banner of Truth. Um, and uh, <clears throat> when I had originally purchased those volumes or received those volumes, they were, they were gifts. Um, I I had thought I would review both of them at the same time because you can only purchase them in the set of two. Uh, but having read the first volume and a portion of the second, I realized I can't review both at the same time. The, the review would be forever long, so I split it up, and today we're going to be looking at volume one, and in a few weeks we will be looking at volume number two. Um, if you're new, welcome to Petra Publications. My name is Davis, and here on the channel, basically all I do is ref uh, review books, reformed Christian books mostly. And recently we've been going through a series, as I mentioned earlier, asking the question, who were the Puritans? Um, and uh, yeah, welcome. Glad to have you here. <clears throat> all links to things that I refer to will be in the description below. So if, if I mention something that you're interested in or want to know more about, it'll be down in the description. Um, so this is a, volume one, is 543 pages. It is a cloth-bound, Smithsonian book printed in the USA and at Versa Press. And actually, this is volume two that I don't have the dust cover on. This might be the most beautiful book that I own. Uh, both of these volumes, just absolutely gorgeous. You have um, this blue... Uh, cloth-bound binding, which I believe the only other book that is blue from Banner of Truth, as far as I know, uh, is A Way to Pray by Matthew Henry. But that one is a different shade of blue, I think. I haven't compared them, but I think it's a different shade of blue. But these are so nice looking, and they have the, the art um, painting on the front. Usually it's just a label. These ones have this royal red with gold uh, lettering and it with the blue it's just it's fantastic beautiful volumes the the dust covers are not uh, particularly ugly either but when you take them off and you just let them sit on your shelf uh, with the blue the red the gold it just it looks so good um, but I do want to mention though they have published beautiful books just beautiful um, there were some complications uh, slash defects in my copies of the book. And I've noticed uh, since 2020, and of course things happened uh, during that time, but there was definitely a, a, a lessening of quality from Versa Press, um, like a visual noticing. You can see it uh, looking at the books and see that one is uh, not as high quality as the other. Um, so you can fix most of these defects with a little bit of super glue. Um, and of course, I'm being extremely picky. I don't think a lot of people are as picky as I am. I'm looking for defects, like actively looking, trying to find a problem with the book. I don't think a lot of people are doing that. But I think uh, there were definitely some defects here that I had to go in and fix with some super glue or I thought maybe the book would fall apart kind of stuff. Um, but again, I understand things have changed in the world. But I do expect that your quality... I, I mean, I would rather pay more and have a higher quality book than... Uh, pay the same and have lesser quality. So just a heads up on that. I think uh, maybe it was just my copy, but I've noticed a pattern in Versa Press more recently. Okay, so let's get some information about Robert Trail before we hop into the book review proper. <clears throat> Robert Trail was born uh, in 1642 and died in 1760. So 16, sorry, not in 60, 16, 1716. Um, so late Puritan era, um, not not early, but <clears throat> still falling into the category of Puritanism. And Trail began his early studies at home with his father, and then later continued studying at the University of Edinburgh, where he focused on literary and theological work. Um, 
He worked alongside the martyr James Guthrie there, and later he had to flee to Holland after being banished, like his father, uh, from Scotland because of doctrinal uh, controversy. It was in Holland that he continued his theological study and helped publish one of Samuel Rutherford's books. Um, he was ordained in 1670 to a presbytery at Cranbrook in Kent, and after much persecution, he was arrested in 1677. After his release, he preached at Scott's Church in London, where he spent the rest of his life. <clears throat> Trail died on May 16th of 1716, an unmarried man. And though he left no physical descendants, he did leave us his Christ-filled works. And they were first published in four volumes in 1745, and they are obviously still in print almost 300 years later today. Um, also, if you're interested in knowing more about Robert Trail, um, there's a link in the description to a really helpful biography. There's like, there aren't that many biographies or short things on him out there because he's not well known. But uh, that particular one I found extremely helpful. Uh, also, which I'll get to in just a moment, um, there is a little biography in his works. So to understand the content uh, of, this, uh, of this book, I'm just going to read the contents <laughs> of the book. Um, so first it opens up with a letter from the, uh, from the late James Hervey to a relation of uh, Mr. Trails. Recommendation to the Sermons on Steadfast Adherence, uh, which is um, coming up here in a minute. Um, an account of the life and character of the author, which is what I was referring to earlier. Uh, the Throne of Grace, 13 Sermons on Hebrews 4.16, which is a fantastic, well, just a fantastic series of sermons. I'll get it, we'll dive into that in a moment. But um, by what means may ministers best win souls? A sermon on 1 Timothy 4.16. A vindication on, of the Protestant doctrine concerning justification and of its preachers and professors from the unjust charge of antinomianism. And then lastly, sermons concerning the Lord's Prayer. 16 sermons on John 17.24. And... I started this book, uh, you know, anytime you start reading a new author, you never know exactly what to expect. Um, their writing style is different. Their, you know, uh, their major point, um, what they're trying to get at is different. What they're trying to teach is different. What they're trying to uh, apply to your life is different. Th this particular theologian, Robert Trail throws you in, and immediately you are surrounded by the doctrine of Christ and all things pertaining Christ. And uh, truly incredible. I mean, the, the, he truly preaches Christ, and it is so beautiful, so elegant, and just, it's just wonderful. Um, the first series uh, going through uh, Hebrews 4.16, I believe, is the reference, or 4.23. I can't remember off the top of my head now. But um, going through, I think there's 16 of them. And each one of them gets deeper and deeper. And each one could stand alone. Like, you don't really need the pre-sermons. Uh, uh, but if you read them in order... It's just more and more amazing, the, the grace of God, and he really brings that to life. Another thing that I appreciated about, <clears throat> about his work in the first volume is he addresses from Scripture the doctrine of total depravity, the doctrine of unconditional election, the doctrine of limited atonement, the doctrine of irresistible grace, and the doctrine of perseverance of the saints. And even though I am not opposed to those doctrines in any way, 
Uh, he presented them in a way that even if I had been, I would not now be. Um, just so, it's so beautiful. It just brings you to your knees. And he brings these things out from scripture. And there's no way you can argue with scripture. And he just does this without, you know, he just points at this text. He's like, look at this. Look at what this is teaching. And you can't argue with it. And it's beautiful. And uh, I just really appreciated how Trail presented the doctrines, never dogmatically, but in a way that said, this is what the text says. And, uh, you, you know, you, you can't argue with, with the text. Um, but truly a wonderful, wonderful book. Uh, I could say more, but I'm going to keep going because there's, there are too much, uh, there's too much left for me to stay there. Um, so are there better books on this topic? I usually ask that question during my reviews. <clears throat> and of course, this is a collected work, so it's not fair to compare with, uh, with other works. Um, but it definitely definitely is up there. He's so, like, he's not well known, and yet he should be. And since he's only two volumes long, uh, it's not like John Owen, where you have, you know, 25 plus volumes to go through. It's two, and it's definitely, definitely worth the time. So would I buy this? Absolutely. And I bought, again, I didn't buy them, but they were given to me. I wanted them, uh, <laughs> rather, um, to further my understanding of J.C. Ryle. Ryle was heavily influenced by Robert Trail. He even quotes him in every book. Um, in fact, there's a little there's a thing here. He said, it has done me good and I think will do good to others, referring to um, Robert Trail. Um, so yeah, I, I, I bought him to uh, understand Ryle better to get some background on Ryle, uh, but was I was so well pleased with it that I would recommend it to to every believer. I think it definitely qualifies that kind of recommendation. Um, in fact, I may reread at some point some Robert Trail for my own sanctification and my own personal enjoyment. So yes, I oh the fan is on. That's interesting. Pardon me. Um, yeah, I definitely, definitely would buy this book. Um, so now, if you're interested in hearing what kind of writing Robert Trail uh, actually wrote in this book, um, oh, and that was another thing I was going to say, uh, which I forgot to mention, was Trail writes in a style of writing that is very, very accessible. Uh, he's writing sermons. They're, you know, shorthand. Someone shorthand uh, wrote all these sermons, and then he was able to publish them that way. But they're so accessible because he's preaching to, you know, a congregation. And so if, uh, you know, he's teaching those doctrines that I mentioned in a way that is very accessible. Um, it doesn't take much head knowledge. It doesn't take much previous knowledge of theology to understand what he's talking about. So it's extremely accessible to anyone who wants to read the book. But to now show that, I'm going to read some of these quotes that I pulled from the book. Quotes that um, stood out to me and uh, meant a lot to me. So first, the first section is the throne of grace, and these first two quotes come from that section. He says, the dependence of the beams of the on the sorry let me start that over. The dependence of the beams on the sun is not more necessary than the dependence of a Christian on Christ. That's on page one fifty four. But what he's saying is, a Christian needs Christ more than a man needs the beams of a, of the sun. That's just so so good. Uh, on page two hundred five, he says, none are saved but the sanctified. And none are sanctified, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> the next section is, you know, how would ministers win souls? Uh, best win souls. 
And he's writing that to a preacher in the country. It's a letter. And um, so on page 224 of, of the book, this one quote basically sums up the entire uh, sermon there. Um, Would ministers win souls? Let them have more of Jesus Christ in their dealing with men and less of other things that never profit them that are exercised therein. So, more Christ, more Christ, more Christ, and the effects of that will be catastrophic. It'll be incredible. Um, page 258, 258 um, this is on his, uh, his letter <coughs> defending uh, the Reformed doctrine of justification and uh, fighting against the accusation of antinomianism, he says, Let us make Christ crucified our great study as Christians, and the preaching of him our main work as ministers. Again, Christ, Christ, Christ. And then I wrote down a page number here for another quote. Page 275. This is... Uh, the opening of um, sermons concerning the Lord's Prayer in John 17, 24. And he says, Three things are simply necessary unto any man's having a tr of true religion and godliness. Sound principle of divine truth known, the Savior of that knowledge in the heart, and the power of that Savior in a man's worship and walk. There are no sound principles of saving truth, but in, in and from God's written word. So again, very, very important stuff there. Um, again, in the Lord's Prayer, actually all these quotes from here on out are going to be in that section because that's what finishes out the book. He says, Believers, you sometimes, when your hearts are full, want to be far from all company that you may pour out your con uh, your complaint to the Lord. That was on page two, 282. But again, you know, so, it's just so biblical. I love it. <clears throat> and this is one of my favorite quotes in the whole book. Page 287, he says, Oh, such love, such blood, such washing. Here is salvation and here only. It is a damning dream to expect it anywhere else. Just you can, you feel his his heart, his love for the people pouring out into these words. Um, page three forty four. He says, "Christ draws them to Himself, whom He minds to save. By nature, they are far off from Christ and far uh, and from salvation, but his, by His grace, they are brought near." Ephesians two thirteen. Christ and salvation are inseparable. Again, Christ, Christ, Christ. He never stops preaching Christ. Page 387, he says, There is no great theme on earth nor in heaven than the glory of Christ. There is no higher enjoyment here nor above than the beholding of his glory. Just Again, you read this and you're just covered in Christ. There, just every page, and you feel Trail's love for his people and for his sheep, and it he he just preaches Christ, and it's it's so good. Um, page three ninety three. He says, "None know the true God." None know, uh, can come by eternal life, but they that know Christ. No faith, love, worship, or obedience can be performed and acted by him that knows not God. Page 405. So that all who would be enriched with true wisdom and the saving knowledge of God must by faith dig in Christ and find them. Three more. Page 456. But it is as truly as commonly said that such as think believing is easy know not 
what believing is. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, page 475. Ministers must neither leave Christ in his grave nor preach a glorified Jesus without remembering his death. It's a very simple statement, but very important. And lastly, page 484. Wisdom out of Christ is damning folly. Righteousness out of Christ is guilt and condemnation. Sanctification out of Christ is filth and sin. Redemption out of Christ is bondage and slavery. And again, just preaching Christ and saying, you know, there is nothing without him. There's no, oh, whoops. There's no wisdom. There's no righteousness. There's no sanctification. There's no redemption without Christ. They're only found in Christ and in him alone. And, um, and he truly preaches that through every sermon and every page of this book. Well, I hope that this review was helpful to you in some shape, way, or form. And if it was, please feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section because I'd love to hear from you anytime. If you have any questions, also feel free to stick those down there. Uh, linked in the description is, um, as I mentioned before, the short biography, uh, the works of Robert Trail, and uh, there's a select practical writings of Robert Trail. It's a shorter paperback volume if that is easier for you to read. That also will be available in the description down below. Well, Lord willing, I will have a review of Volume 2 coming out at some point in the near future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon, Lord willing. God bless.